Let's talk about the long bone fractures or diaphyseal fractures in the adult patient. We talked about the humerus and the femur in the puppy and kitten, and we talked about the radius and ulna, but let's just hit humerus, femur, and uh, tibial fractures uh, in, in adults as well. So clearly, ideally, an adult animal with a fractured femur, a fractured tibia, humerus, will get surgical repair. If you can't, your considerations are going to be amputation or conservative management. So a tibial fracture can always be splinted. Ideally, if you are going to treat a fracture with a splint, you would love for the bones to be only, that bone to only be in two pieces, not 12. And it would be ideal if you can get those fracture ends to overlap. But if you have a complicated fracture or a fracture that you can't reduce, uh, your choices again would be to amputate the limb or to give it a try in a splint. Understanding that splinting in an adult dog and depending on the dog or cat's personality, especially cats, uh, may not be an easy thing to manage, but it is something that you can possibly do. These bones will heal and can heal and they don't have to be aligned before you put them in the splint. Just get your splint on and it will serve to align the joints properly. So in other words, the toe and the and the hock joint are going to be pointing in the correct di direction relation in relation to the stifle joint. And that's what makes the leg functional. Humerus, you can use spica bandage or splint. Tibia, you can use a uh, splint that goes above the knee if it's proximal tibia. You can use a splint that will stay below the knee. I know, I know, I know I'm breaking all the rules here. But you can use a splint that does not go above the knee if it's a more distal, so mid to distal tibial fracture. And the reason why I tell you that is because splints that go above the stifle are really hard to manage. They're hard to put on. You end up with some bandage splint sores. They're just difficult to manage. So if you can get away with not having to incorporate the stifle in your bandage, that makes life easier. And if the bandaging and splinting is going well and you're not having too many problems, you, your client, and God knows the patient are more likely to see this through the end without getting too frustrated. So the whole point of this is to get the patient to be able to use the limb again before we cut it off. The femur, on the other hand, is not one that you can splint. So don't even try, don't, do not put a splint on a distal femoral fracture. A fractured femur, the best you can do is crate rest that patient. Not ideal, especially in an adult, because they're just gonna take longer to heal, right? And you gotta manage their pain, but that is a possibility. In my opinion, I think I would rather cope with that than deal with an amputation. That's my opinion, and it doesn't make me right. That is just my opinion. But we have good drugs now, and we know how to manage pain, And uh, but you do, you do have to have a, a long chit chat with your client. I just need to repeat myself here. Surgical repair is the best way to manage all of these fractures. However, if it truly is not an option, conservative management should be considered before amputating. Please keep in mind that the closer a fracture is to the joint, so if it's in the proximal or distal diaphysis, and the more complicated, the more pieces there are to that fracture, the less likely conservative management will be useful. So do pick and choose your fractures for conservative management. You can find more information like this in my Fracture Management for the Small Animal Practitioner book available on Amazon.